Hey dudes, I'm Hyla, and today on Hyla Cooking's Christmas Around the World series, we are headed to Germany, or Deutschland, as I think they call it there. I don't know. Uh, we're gonna make cinnamon stars, or Zimtstern, which are perhaps one of the most unusual cookie recipes that I have ever made, so I am really excited to share them with you. It's like a meringue with almonds and cinnamon and lemon, and it's really quite interesting, and I think you're going to love it. Zimtstern! All right, for the cookie dough, I use that word loosely, we've got two egg whites here, and we're gonna beat these up until they're fairly stiff. Uh, when you're doing egg whites, you like the enemy of fluffy egg whites is oil or grease, so make sure that your bowl and your beater is super clean. And you can even like wipe it out with a little bit of vinegar if you're worried there might be some oily residue. So we're gonna start this on kind of a medium low, just so we don't splatter egg all over the place. Um, and then when it starts to get a little foamy, I'm gonna add in some lemon juice. Okay, so once it starts to look like this, a little uh, bubbly, I've got some lemon juice and some lemon zest, and I'm gonna add those in. And the acid of the lemon juice is also gonna help the egg whites um, make nice firm peaks and we're gonna let this go until it's at a medium stiff peak and that'll take a few minutes on high and I'll show you what that looks like when we get there. Okay, so I'm gonna check it. I think it looks medium-y. Okay, yeah. So you can see when you lift up your beaters, if the the meringue in the bottom of the bowl makes a little bit of a peak, kind of follows the beaters and then flops over. Bloop, see it went like up and then uh, I'm tired. So that's good, that's a medium stiff. And now I've got some powdered sugar and cinnamon and I've sifted these, well no, I didn't sift the cinnamon, but I have sifted the powdered sugar. So we wanna have this kind of on a low speed just so you don't like spray cocaine powder everywhere. <laughs> Kidding, it's powdered sugar. And we wanna just kind of add this gradually a little bit of time. And if you were doing this with a hand mixer as opposed to a stand mixer, you would just add a little bit and then mix it up and then add a little bit more and then mix it up. With a stand mixer, it's a little more streamlined because you can just do it like this. So once you've got it in there, just wanna kinda scrape down the sides to make sure all the sugar's in there. You can see this meringue has kinda fallen a little bit from the sugar, but it's um, still very thick. So now, get all that in there. We're just gonna beat this on high again until we get a really beautiful, shiny, uh, thick meringue. And I'll show you what that looks like when we get there. It'll take a few more minutes on high. Okay, so just check it periodically. I could see that the beaters were starting to leave a, a streak through the meringue, so there we go. Okay, we're getting really close now. I'm gonna let it go a little bit longer. Okay. Oh, beautiful. Okay, so it's not gonna make like a stiff peak because of the sugar and everything, but can you see how it's sort of almost making ribbons when you lift the the beaters up and then you get left with this little streaky peak <laughs> a little streaky peak um, let me try to show it to you a little better see that in the center there see how the beater is just sort of hanging like a little stalactite okay now we're gonna take some of this meringue and set it aside that's gonna be like the topping for our cookies so I'm just actually gonna you want to maybe a third of a cup or half a cup all right, so that's about enough. We'll set this aside and this is gonna be like a little meringue icing. So I've got some almond meal or almond flour. This is already like pre-ground up almonds. If you wanna grind your own, I put directions for doing that on my website. Um, I prefer to use the almond meal just cause it's more uh, consistent consistency. Um, so we're gonna add about a half a pound of this. You don't really need to be delicate with it because we're trying to get it 
um, stiff enough to roll out. So it's okay if you pop your air bubbles. Okay, so once you've got a dough that is like this, it's still fairly soft and it's just chock full of healthy nuts. Looks a little grainy and sandy. I'm gonna put this in the fridge now for an hour up to a couple of hours. Um, that's really important or else you're just gonna like go crazy trying to flatten it out. So um, cover it with some plastic or something and just stick it in the fridge and then I'll show you how to roll them out. Okay, so my dough has been in the fridge for a while. It's still quite soft. That is okay. And if you want to just work with half of it at a time too, that's totally fine and probably recommended. All right, so I've got a sheet of parchment here and a piece of wax paper on top of that. And you just wanna, you can use a rolling pin. Sometimes it's easier just to use your hands, but you wanna flatten it out to maybe a third of an inch, or what is that, like a little less than a centimeter. Thick, that looks good. We'll peel that off. And if you find that it's sticking to your paper, you can sprinkle a little bit of almond meal or powdered sugar down um, to maybe help with that a little bit. And I've got a little star cutter. I'm sure you could use another shape, but I'm gonna do this, try to be proper. And if it does that, you can kind of lift it out and poke it over here. But really, the reason I'm doing it on parchment paper is because the dough is so delicate, sometimes the, the shapes get distorted when you try to move them. So it's actually working really well right now, but if it's not popping out in your cutter like this, then at the end, you can just pull away the excess and your cookies are already on a parchment and then you can just transfer that right to your baking sheet. And then we can transfer this right to our little baking sheet. And they're all in crazy positions, but that's okay. It's like a constellation. Okay, so then we're gonna spread these with a little bit of our meringue. A small uh, new paintbrush would probably work better, but all my paintbrushes have tempura paints all in them. Tempura paints. Watercolors. So you just wanna coat the top as much as you can. Try to get all the little edges. And the cool thing about this dough is that it's naturally gluten-free, so if you're cooking for anyone with, you know, sensitivity or celiac or anything, these are something that you could make for them. And because of that, you can re-roll the scraps indefinitely. So the stuff that I just pulled away from these cookies, I'll put back in the fridge and let it chill again for another 30 minutes or so. And um, then you can roll out and cut some more cookies. No bigs. And the first few times I made these, um, it really took me a few tries to get this recipe right. So don't be discouraged if the first time you make them, your dough is too soft to roll and cut. You can totally just make little round blobs and decorate them the same way. And they won't look as cute, but they'll still be tasty. <laughs> Okay, so once they are all coated with your meringue, you can bake them now, but I like to make them a little bit fancier. And I've got some just sliced almonds here. And you can kind of decorate them however you want. For this particular star shape cutter, I like to do a little kind of a cross in the middle. <laughs> So once they're all decorated, I'm gonna put these in a very slow oven, 275, for about 25 minutes until the tops of the meringues are set but not actually turned brown. And then um, take them out and let them com cool completely on the cookie sheet. Okay, so 25 minutes later, these are our beautiful Zimt Stern. So the meringue is still white, but you can see around the edges of the cookies, the bottom edges are a little bit brown, so they're 
They're good and they smell cinnamony and delicious. I'm gonna let them cool completely on the tray. Then we'll be ready to eat them, just like that. Okay, the cookies have cooled off. You can see how beautiful they look. They're like little snow-capped mountains. Um, for this recipe in printable format, as well as tons of other recipes, and the easiest way to ask me questions about recipes, visit hylacooking.com. If you're still in the market for Christmas presents for people, um, also check out, I've got uh, three cookbooks in print available now. So, cookbook for everyone that you know. And um, let's give these a little taste. <laughs> mm, so good. Cinnamony, lemony, chewy and crispy at the same time. Kind of hits all your bases there, folks. All right, there you go. There's how to make cinnamon stars or jumpstone. Hope everyone has a wonderful holiday season, and I'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.